Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Educational Gamer, and we are playing Buzz Aldrin's Space Program Manager. Last time we spent the year 1955 pr pretty much with the preparations of what we're doing. This time we actually want to conduct a space mission, so let's see how the reliability of our missions, or of our mission components, has increased uh, since the last time. The space um, plane, <laughs> X-15, uh, has improved by 9.2%, so that's pretty fine. We're now at nearly 70% reliability. I think we're just on the cusp of definitively being able to launch that in 1956. So that's very good to see. Uh, Explorer 1 being a little bit improved, not where we need it to be right now. These uh, Jupiter Seas coming in really nicely at 30, uh, 20 percent improvement over here, so that's pretty good to see. Let's see about the news. Good news: a random event over here. So a significant technical discovery it has increased our R&D process by 21 percent over the next three seasons, so that's very good. Upgrade process for the SAT Center has finished as well. So uh, let's see where we stand over here. Uh, our Astronauts are still conducting basic training for at least two more seasons. So we have at least two seasons until we could potentially start our X-15 space plane over here. And I think that's a pretty good time actually. So we are now at 68% reliability. If we do conduct this for two more, uh, two more seasons, I do think that we would be at a pretty good stage over here. So next term we'll be at 75%. And then maybe another 5%, we would be at 80%, which I think would be decent enough to maybe go ahead and, and uh, try at uh, increasing our, uh, our capabilities over there. Uh, no one else on busy, so the first number here over here is always the number of un uh, available people, the second one the people who are there and conducting things, and the maximum number. So we could think about hiring more astronauts, we can definitely think about hiring another one in the Mission Control Center. Let's actually cancel that for a second. Uh, all of these people are pretty fine I think, except maybe you, you're at 88%, but still that's fine for now. Do we have any good people who are... Uh, yeah, 94%, 93... So between the two 94%, you're 36. You're a little bit more expensive. You have some good capabilities. You're 93. 93 is pretty good. And you're only 30. You're a lot cheaper. So let's actually pick Federici uh, Federos in Capi over here uh, to be one of our flight controllers. Definitely gonna hire you. You're gonna go into basic training. Same over here with our R&D people. So, we are getting a little bit thin on the money, so and since our pretty much our rockets will cost some things as well, we need to be a little bit careful over here. Uh, that being said, re engineers are super important. This is a really, really good one. Extremely young, cheap, and very, very good learning capabilities. 29, as you can obviously see by the picture. Uh, as I said last time, these are really not well matched. You're also pretty young and relatively good, but pretty expensive as well. A little bit older, pretty good, pretty expensive. It's fine then. Anyone else? Do you want to pick you? You are expensive. Ah, still, you're so young, it's, it's good. 89%? Yeah, no, I think. 89%, 88%, but you're both so expensive, so I'd rather pick these guys. Hi the recruits, you're gonna go through training and we're not gonna have another chance to hire people this term, but I think that's gonna be fine. So these people will need to conduct their basic training so we won't be able to use them now, so let's end the season over here. Skim a little bit through 1956, some marginal improvements on the um, space plane and you can see it's getting more tough to, to improve this thing right now. Same really with the other things. I think last time we had a 20% improvement, now it's only 13. Still, that rocket almost hit 50% probability of being um, capable now. Flatcon, uh, yeah, we did hire a couple of people. We did 
some people who are undergoing basic training, yeah, that's fine. All in all, very good. Astronauts will be finishing anything next term. So we don't really have anything to do for you this term. Could think about hiring people over here. 96%, ooh, you'd be very good. 94%. Most of you are pretty old though. Specifically the 96, you're yeah, pretty expensive and a little bit old for my taste. You're a little bit less expensive and less, but also less good. Yeah, especially your leadership is, is really cracking. And honestly, you just don't look like... Yeah, I'm being a little bit <laughs> superficial here. You look like an astronaut. Yeah, 39 though, so no. No hiring of astronauts this time. So yeah, we can end the season over here. Reliability now at 78%. 79%. I think we might risk it. 63%, that's still way too low. 60%, yeah. Lots of news. Nothing too serious though. We do now have three people ready on SD on the SAT center, so look let's look at the people who are ready. Pretty good people overall in terms of what in terms of their potential. Right now though, yeah, maybe a little bit. Nevertheless, uh, we do have spice controllers, we do have the astronauts, so um, I do think that the first thing that we're gonna do over here is go to the X-15 space plane and let's look at the potential things that we can do over here. So all of these pretty much have the same um, same uh, reliability, so 78%, so there's no real detriment to, to maybe conducting this one last. But that being said, I do think uh, we will start with the fly test over here. Um, it's the least important if we do fail. Um, I don't think we will, but it would decrease our uh, prestige basically by the lowest amount and that would be pretty good. So let's get your mission over here. Let's assemble the fly, fly crew now. It does put up a warning that we are below 80% but it's just so little below 80% that I don't care. So let's start with the mission over here. We need to assign four people for flight controllers. Um, the flight director is the one that is the most important to me because he will control everything. And he needs to be a very well-rounded character, so it's the average all of all of these values. And Paul over here is the best at that, at a meager 59%, so that's not that great. Um, in terms of... Wait a minute. I think we wanted to pick Chastity. She's a little bit worse, but that does put allow us to put Paul in the driver's seat on the propulsion. Laura on the trajectory. And space plane systems here by Luke. Yeah, that's fine. We will confirm these assignments. Who's going to be the pilot? You can see for the pilot the most important aspects are somewhat between leadership, piloting and fitness. Piloting is pretty important, especially in the later phases. I think piloting and leadership to be is somewhat on equal footing. So, Karen, Mauricio. Mauricio is a little bit better in piloting. Somewhat worse in leadership, but I think on average he'll be a little bit better. Plus he has better fitness. Cynthia over here is pretty good, but fitness is really lacking. Yeah, and these people are still worse. So yeah, I'm going to actually pick the one male, Mauricio, over here to uh, be the first pilot. It's going to cost us £600,000, uh, I was about to say, uh, dollars to start the mission, but I think that's well worthwhile. So that's fine, we set up our first mission and it's going to be played next time. So let's look at the payloads on D first. So I think it would be really great if we could push this up a little bit further. Uh, we'll have one last go uh, before the mission starts. So before anything else I'm going to draw away all of these people so I have the best people away uh, available for this research over here. Let's place three employees over here. I think that's going to be fine, it's going to increase that by 5%. Could do one more person, but it's just going to be the marginal impact of that. It's going to be so, so low, so I think that's fine. Space probes, yeah, you're very good. 
You, you are very good. Does it even matter if you pick a third person? 6.5, 8.1, yeah, I think that's alright. And on the rocket programs, again, of course, Justin is our top guy. Blake. And then these two dots. So if I don't put Blake, but put Trenton over here, 6.3 against... 7. Yeah. No, it's still important that we, that we make this drive early on to just get the best potential rocket over here. So yeah, I think that's fine. Although, that being said, I think we had only oh, three people working on all of these systems, so that's fine. Yeah, we're going to send you on the rockets. Gonna get to a point where that's probably okay. So that does mean we have no one available in the SAT center. And we have a couple of astronauts available, so let's conduct some training over here on the people who are available. All of these women, basically. So you were pretty good. You were lacking fitness, though. So we're gonna give you a fitness training. You're pretty good at fitness. You lacking leadership? Let's do that. Yeah, I think leadership is a point for you as well. And on you, we're going to do some piloting training and that's going to be fine. Right. Likewise, we have one mission controller left. That's uh, Fedoros over here. I think the last person that we hired. Um, and you're going to get training on the trajectory over here as well. That should be all right. Good. Right. So it's 1956. Uh, 56, uh, autumn of 1956. We're going to end this season over here and going to start our first mission. First we do get the reliability improvement. Nice 4.5% so we are now at 83% reliability. I really really like that. And these things are starting to look a little bit better as well. So here we go. Scheduled mission. A flight test for the X-15. Components reliability 83%. That's fine. Let's launch the mission over here. And we're going to monitor that from mission control. So the interface here is basically uh, flight controllers who will be uh, conducting a couple of things. They'll be active. Um, they, here are the different stages of the flights. So you can basically uh, see us going through them in a short while. And you can see the status. Hopefully everything is going to be all right. So let's start over here. Takeoff seems to be going good. Success over there. Pre-launch is... Also successful, very good. Second stage, moving into the third stage, Morning dropping the plane. Everything checked here. Ready to launch now. Successful so far, very good, very good. You're ascending. Your position is good. Nice, nice. Come on, okay, success. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Flaps and circuit breakers. Now you can go landing. Descending first, yes. And landing. Please don't crash on landing. Looking good. Looking very good, yes! So that does um, conclude the mission. Uh, it's going to be season 1 out of 1. Prestige point earned 250. That's very nice, but not that great. And we have earned our first goal. Fantastic! Pretty good, so that firstly means we're not going to lose the game. Uh, because we have more than 250 points. Uh, we should really aim for 2,500 though, so that we can get the maximum funding in the next season. Uh, sorry, in the next flight season, so for, for um, four years from now. Three years from now, four, four years. Right, most importantly though, uh, we did get a little bit of training on the flight controllers who were involved. Um, our uh, uh, pilot did get uh, a little bit of training. And... We did learn a little bit about the X-15, so we have upgraded the reliability by quite a bit, actually. So that's perfect, actually. So let's look over here. Let's manage our programs. Let's look at the X-15. So you can see we have uh, completed this mission configuration, which is actually very, very nice. More importantly, though, we should go at the R&D screen over here. You can see that the reliability has now increased to a point of 88%. So that's pretty good. Uh, our marginal improvements really start to water down. We could improve it to 92%. And I think we will keep some people on working on this. But it doesn't necessarily have to be everyone. So we're going to pick one uh, engineer off from this. That's going to be alright. 
Improvement still needed on the Explorer 1 and we could think about sending you here, but yeah, the marginal impact would be really, really small. Uh, on the rockets, you guys are all fine. Yeah, you do need to improve the rocket a little bit over there, so that's fine. That does leave us with one person available because it's not that important right now. So what we're going to do over here is send you to advanced training on crewed aircraft because that is your strong suit already. So that's perfectly fine. It's going to cost us a little bit, but I think that's a well worthwhile investment. Very, very good. So next year we will be able to hire more people, but I don't think we have the funding ready. So nine seasons to go until we get... So basically we're in the middle of the first season. We have managed to uh, achieve the minimum goal. And we are going to go for the highest goal over here so we can increase our funding. Right. I think it would be worthwhile to manage our programs, go to the X-15 and do the experimental flight 1 over here. It's going to give us a little bit of prestige, 600. And that'd be actually pretty good. On the other hand, oh no, this level 1, this level 2, yeah perfectly fine. Right, so I think it would be worthwhile to schedule this mission. There's one pro problem though, and that is the astronaut center. Uh, we've sent all of our four people over here to training, and my ratio uh, does need to rest a little bit. So we would need to uh, free up one person to conduct a flight. Um, who should that be? We know it's mainly about leadership, piloting, and to a lower degree fitness. You'd be really good at the first two, but not at fitness. You'd be really bad at leadership. I think you, Karen over here, is actually pretty good. She's she's a good leader. She's not a great pilot. She's a, of decent fitness, though. So we're going to remove her from training. It does mean um, that the skill yield is going to be lower than otherwise expected, but still a 10% improvement in piloting. So she's really fit now. So yeah, I really enjoy that. Mission controllers do not need a rest season, so these guys are still ready, and that I think is very fine. So indeed, what we can do is back to back, actually schedule our second flight over here. So yes, we are going to do that. We're going to assemble that now. And we can auto pick the best uh, candidates over here, but I don't think that's entirely ideal because I would actually like Paul to be our propulsion guy and Chastity to be our flight director guy. Uh, flight director guy, I was supposed to say. And that I think is a much better distribution. Pilot is going to be Karen, as we just said. We're going to confirm these assignments. That means we are spending a, a lot of money again. Uh, but next season we will be launching the spacecraft. And we are still researching that, right? Yes. Very low marginal uh, contribution there, but still fine, I think. So yeah, let's end the season. Reliability improvement, very small now. Explorer? Could think about launching this. Maybe? Maybe put a satellite into space? It would be a really great win. Let's see how this mission goes first. So we're going to launch this mission again from Mission Control. You can see a similar number of steps, but I think number four is new over here, so let's see how things go. Of course, first will be similar. Take off pre-launch, launching and so on. These are very similar. Successful, very good. Drop from plane, very good. Come on, be successful. Even if you've done this a couple of times and it worked out alright, there might still be some glitch in the plane. Nevertheless, we've gone to number four pretty well. Ascending, ascending a higher. Very good. Peak altitude. A little bit weirdly drawn over here, but your yeah, that's a new good. step. Okay, I have been successful. Descending now, successful breakers. and landing. We should mess up now. Karen, I'm trusting in you. And that seems very good. Excellent. So more prestige points. Successful mission over here. Very good for us, and most importantly, it's going to improve. Uh, the X-15 a little bit further. Flight controller is doing a little bit more of a good job. And even Karen is increasing her leadership. Very, very good stuff. 
So, all of these pretty much as expected, we did hire a couple of people, um, and you can see that a couple, that these two guys have been removed from the X15 program because we've actually reached maximum reliability. And that is something you can see over here. So, the maximum reliability that we can achieve with research is 92.6%. That's where we are right now. Uh, so we can't really improve this any further. We can only increase the reliability further by conducting missions. And that's fine. So speaking of missions, um, Mauricio has recovered from his mission. Um, or from his rest season. Karen is now in rest season. But that means we can ideally even now manage our programs, go to the X-15 and start on the last mission of that. We could of course repeat the previous missions, but it's going to give us very little prestige. 100 prestige in case of success, and it's going to draw down a lot of um, prestige if we fail. I am worried about getting a lot of prestige, so let's ideally schedule this mission right away. Assemble it now. Going to assign the best candidates. And yeah, it's going to still do that. We want it this way. A little bit weaker flight controller, a little bit more um, know-how on the booster. Marisha is going to step in again and we're going to confirm these assignments. Again, a lot of money was drawn and we are running low on funds. It does say we have a positive impact, but it doesn't calculate um, the rocket. And you can see we are coming down in, in our funding, but I think that's fine because we really, really want to get more income next flight season. Very good. It is early 1957, so that means we can have a look at whether we want to hire anyone. 94%, your potential IRE, 92, 91. Um, you are all pretty, pretty good actually, I think. You're very costly, but you're young, so we have a lot of time to train you up. For you it's the reverse, so that's fine, and you're somewhere in the middle. I think these are good recruits. So you're going to go into basic training, we have a space for one more person. On the astronauts we can hire anyone, no wait a minute, you're very old. 90 at 31, you're fine, 39 year old, 36 year old, all of these people, eh, 34, 34, I think you'd be pretty decent and you're cheap. So we're going to hire you, and well, that's fine. Flight controllers. We do have five, but we're not. Yes, we're not. Ad, we're earning not not ad, earning any money anymore. So that's a little bit um, discerning. Let's look at the other payload over here. Um, you'd be pretty good at space probes too, actually, and crewed spacecraft. That's a very good combination. Fifty-nine. But the explorer is actually fine. We need to spend more resources on the rockets. Are you any good at rockets? A little. You're not very much better than these guys, so that's fine. And we can look at you guys. Space probes. Space probes. And you, because it's not worthwhile to train you up, so going to be there and that leaves us as one person who we'll be able to train up. I think in space probes it's going to be fine. Good! All of these people are ready. Uh, we could expand these things but again no money so we do have some money but not to kick around for much longer. It's going to be two more years for the next flight season to begin. So even if we are successful in increasing our prestige, funding will only be increased in two years so there's no point in expanding these right now so let's end season you can see the x15 has been removed from the progress because there's been no progress uh, due to research still fine though and i think these things are looking like we might take a shot over here let's launch this mission components reliability is increasing over here that's very good to see and somewhat similar process that we've seen before. Hopefully, yeah, still successful. Still haven't seen a single prizes, and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed over here. And take a sip of coffee. Thanks so much. Everything here. Ready to launch now. Oh, come on. Yeah, very good. So 
successful. Number four, please. Ascending. But now this is Your a pretty good payment. Good. Of course, okay, historically the X-15 has been a little bit of a bottleneck. Um, it's been successful in establishing the system and especially in garnering some support from the military because it was military fighters flying these things. And yeah, there we go. Earning a lot of prestige by, by this slide. Potentially getting some badges. Very nice. Right, there we go. Hypersonic research at the edge of space, so that's very good. And space plane uh, done, so very good. More upgrades on the X-15. These are starting to look a little bit less relevant right now. Here we go. All good news. Hide astronauts, hide scientists. Very, very nice indeed. So, let's have a look at the X-15 program now. We've run all of these missions. Again, we could rerun them. But it wouldn't give us really a lot of prestige and of course it would cost us some money to just prepare uh, the research. So frankly, to be honest, I think this program has run its course. There's no point in keeping it up and keeping it up does cost some money. Can we see that over here? Yeah. It does cost us 150,000 just to keep it running, uh, which would be fine. But why would we? So, yeah, I think it's time to close this program. Here we go. That's fine. That's going to give us a little bit of time to focus on our other missions, especially Explorer 1. Now, Explorer 1, let's have a look at the R&D. The satellite itself seems to be doing, doing pretty well. And we might actually think about removing these people. 0.5 improvement, I don't think that's worthwhile. Let's have a look at the rocket program. How about you? 44, 34. Yeah, I think here still at least I want to be above 80%, so it's worthwhile to keep these guys kicking around. Who else have we got then? You. You're really, really not that great, mate. And you're pretty expensive, so we're going to dismiss this employee. I don't think we can hire anyone, can we? No, because we've done so this year already. So, let's think about what Anthony should do over here. Uh, we can definitely send him to training. He's pretty good at space probes and crude spacecraft. So, I think in terms of space probes, we have some people who are pretty good. And space and manned aircraft. You're actually the best at space air, uh, at um, crewed aircraft, so yeah, I think it's worthwhile to keep training you on this. Let's do single course for now, I think that's going to be alright. Right. So, our astronauts. A lot of you are available because you've just gone through training, um, and that's fine, but there's no immediate crewed mission that we are going to do, so I think it's worthwhile just to keep on training these people up. Specifically do uh, focus on leadership and piloting and fitness. So let's do the thing that you're weakest in all the time. You can do some pilot training. You're pretty good at all things. Let's maybe focus on fitness for one thing. So that's fine. You're all training now. Mission control center. So let's think about Explorer 1 over here. So, let's pick this rocket. This is something that we could do. We would need three flight controllers. We are at nearly 2,500 prestige. This would earn us 1,650. Seven flight seasons. I think it's worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile simply because I want to beat the Soviets. I want. I don't want Sputnik to be the first uh, satellite in space. It is risky. Juno might fail over here. Explorer might fail. Still, let's do this. Yes, we know it's below 60%. It is risky. Uh, let's pick Paul for the booster. Chasey for flight controller look for the spacecraft systems that's fine we're going to confirm these assignments 
you can see rockets are very expensive, so it's costing us 1.8 million over here. Or billion, I guess. Uh, simply to assemble that, and, and that does cut deep in our funding. Uh, it does leave us, though, with two uh, flight controllers who are ready to do something else, though. Who would be our best flight controller long term? Or flight director? Would be Paul or Chesity, but I'm a little bit afraid that we keep on using these guys and not be able to train them. Trajectory is a really important skill. You're 92, you're 37. I want to have someone young. Federos over here might be a good flight control, uh, flight director. Yeah, I think he will be. 93%, 31 years. You're very good. You're, you're a good flight controller, flight director. So let's train you in what you know the least of, which will be fine. And then you can go ahead and uh, train more about trajectories. And that's fine. That's everyone. Yeah, it is. So do we want to hire another astronaut? We've done so already. I think we hired people in the SAT. Yeah, we done. So that's fine. So yeah. We've tested all of the X-15 uh, flights, so that's very nice. The next step is, of course, uh, to conduct Earth orbiting satellites. We could also think about, there are no further space planes, we could also think about one-man ballistic missiles, so pro Project Mercury over here. I'm a little bit hesitant about that though, because it's going to cost us 3 million just to open it and 300,000 to keep it running. And we don't currently have any rocket capable of supporting this mission. We'd need a suborbital, um, human-rated, or low, uh, low Earth orbit human-rated missile carrying uh, 1.4, uh, 1,400 kilograms, and that's simply not something that we have. So we would need a human-rated. Rocket, yeah, this one basically the Atlas, and that was would cost us another five hundred thousand uh, per turn to run, and three million just to keep running. So, yeah, these things are really, really not uh, in our range right now, but we could think about um, other satellite programs, for example. So, for example, the Pegasus satellite over here might be worthwhile. It would allow us to do some studies over here again we need another missile but it would be a nice chance to improve on what we've got that seems to be a little bit more capable low earth orbit this is this is a lot of weight nine nine tons this is a little bit more doable 133 i think 133 is what we can do no it's not how much are you 500 so orbiting frog over here is actually um, the closest within our grasp, and it is just that it's an orbiting frog. Hmm. Still, just two hundred thousand to keep it running. I don't think we'd need to do that right now. I would rather, if we have any time left in this flight season, focus a little bit on training and building up the capability for the next flight season, since we are very likely to range enough prestige to get good funding. And even now we wouldn't be that bad, we'd lose about 300,000 over here, but... So yeah, I think that's fine. So yeah, all in all, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye!